Ryan Gosling is Ryan Gosling sucks. He's just not good. I don't like Ryan Gosling in general. In general, I don't. You I think one of the arguments was you're like, you got to see the nice guys. I haven't seen Love Actually or whatever. What's the one that he's in with like Emma Stone? Oh, Crazy Stupid Love. Yeah, yeah I haven't the, seen Crazy Stupid Love. So maybe that we'll do that next year. Lethal Weapon 3 and Crazy Stupid Love. So I can keep trying to <laughs> oh like Ryan Gosling. God. But I Mark don't. Your- <laughs> folks, December 7th, 2023, <laughs> Crazy Stupid Love and Lethal Weapon 3. We're going to get Tim on this. Uh. <laughs> Light the beam, because it's time for Nerdy for 30, the podcast where we talk about nerdy-ish movies for 30-ish minutes. I'm one of your co-hosts, Kevin Bauer, a.k.a. The Critics' Choice. With me, as always, is the people's champ, Tim Keck. But not just Tim Keck. We have a special guest here today. He's back with us once more to continue the Ryan Gosling slash Lethal Weapon discussion. You might know him from the Everything But Net podcast. It's Michael Breen. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm really excited <laughs> to be here. Hey, now, Breen, for being here, man. Uh, it's, it's this an, has become a it? bit of a tradition. We watch um, Lethal Weapon because I want you guys to watch something good, and then you convince me to watch a Ryan Gosling movie because I'm I'm not sure why exactly. We don't know. Um, and last year we you do. said Crazy Stupid Love. We're doing Lethal Weapon three. A back-to-back with Michael Breen. Uh, I'm excited about this. Do you think this is going to help support your case that Ryan Gosling, I guess, is an, is an actor? Yeah, for me, there's no... It's supporting my case. I know what I know. It's, are you going to wake up? Is kind of how <laughs> I feel now. It's This isn't on me. This is about your credibility, not only as a, a moviegoer, but as a person. Hmm. Okay. So uh, probably about the same amount of progress we made last year, but I'm excited to try it out. (laughs) (laughs) This is a really unique situation for me because in a way I feel like my parents are fighting, but also I've taken a side in the fight. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. I, you're, I know this is always about Ryan Gosling. Yes. But what do you guys actually think about crazy, stupid love? Is this a good movie? Do you guys think this is a good movie? Do you think this like represents Ryan Gosling as an actor or a performer or whatever? I'll answer the second question first. Do I think it represents him as an actor and performer? Definitely. I think this is his whole thing. I think we get to see him in his best moments doing his thing. Uh, is it a good movie? It It is for me. I like this movie a lot. And I it's a little flowery at times but i still think it's a very good time and we don't get a lot of movies like this yeah Yeah, i'm right there with breen on it i really love this movie i was fixated on this movie when it first came out sometimes i'll see a movie for the first time and i'll watch it like five more times that same weekend this is one of those really love the way this thing is structured the hannah reveal blew my mind when i saw it for the first time it's so fun to get everybody together there at the very end i will say on a note as to whether this is good or not, this is the first viewing of this movie where I realized that this movie is going to fucking fall apart over the years. It is already starting to show some wear. There's already a lot of stuff in this movie that does not hold up. One of the things being their attitude towards consent. And I think this is going to be one of those movies that like our kids will be embarrassed that we want to be associated with. But at the time, it was nothing but charm. Dude, I'm embarrassed you guys want to be associated with this. I, you didn't tell me Andrew Tate wrote the fucking script for Crazy Stupid Love. I mean, all of the women in this movie act exactly the way Red Pillars think women act all the time. It's crazy. These characters are so shallow, so one-dimensional. People are acting absolutely insane. It, it Nothing in this movie makes sense. It is just, it is just an insane interpretation of love and what people do and i it doesn't make any sense already it's bad already the consent thing is rough already the like master pickup artist thing is like it's it's not good it's not a good look this whole movie is gross and creepy and i i i guess i'm watching it with fresh eyes i've seen parts of it before watching it now in the year 2023 of our lord it is it's a rough it was a rough watch honestly i was cringing the whole time 
let's clarify this, like, because some people haven't seen this movie who might listen to this podcast. And let's clarify that consent only happens with the like, should if a girl says no to ordering a drink, you get her a drink anyway. I think that's basically as far as it no. goes. And, but it no, sounds like we're saying it. something much the whole worse. Plot with it the does. babysitter. The whole plot with the babysitter, Robbie. Oh, yeah. Robbie. We know where Robbie was on January sixth. He was fucking in the Capitol building looking for girls to stalk. I mean, this guy is a creep. He's a perv. He's following this babysitter. He's doing all these things. She tells him in text, like in court, they have enough documentation of her saying, no, please desist. Please stop. No, Robbie, please stop. What's the moral of the movie? Don't give up until she says yes. And then at the end, you're rewarded for it. He's rewarded with nudes from this older (laughs) babe. What the fuck is this movie? It's this is it's also not just nudes. It is child pornography. It is child pornography. It's child pornography. Straight up gives her child. Um, She gives him child pornography. I mean, this is what do you mean consent? This is crazy. You you are you are totally right. Actually, I didn't think about that because when Robbie enters the screen, I black out. (laughs) <laughs> it's the, like there is nothing i like less in this movie than robbie <laughs> robbie ruins the movie for me we could have cut 25 minutes out of this movie without robbie being part of it he is to me very upsetting and like while i was watching it this time every time robbie came on screen i was like oh it's time to fill up my water bottle time for a bathroom break it was yeah i i i forgot that that's such a big message for steve carell i was thinking more ryan gosling uh steve carell uh yeah dynamic but yeah though the way he tells his kid to just keep going after she says no yeah that's not gonna hold up yeah Mm. it is it is strange and just to to follow the red pillar like thread for a second with before we get into beefs and thieves like the premise is that steve carell's wife cheats on him and then breaks up with him why well, according to like like what we're shown, it's because he wears New Balance shoes, which, by the way, have come back into fashion. So, you know, already this movie's aging terribly. And he's but he's schlubby, I guess. He doesn't dress nice. Otherwise, he seems like a great dude. He's very nice. He's very attentive. Girls have crushes on him. Like he is. He seems like a great guy. The only problem is what he's wearing, and I guess maybe some chemistry. This all could have been solved with a with a conversation, right? I think I think partners generally have a lot of influence over what their partner wears, right? She couldn't have got him, bought him a pair of slacks. She couldn't have bought him like a pair of shoes for like his birthday or Christmas. Like you could you could fix this problem. If the only problem is the way he's dressed, you could you can clean this up. So then she says, I want a divorce. I cheated on you. And it's your fault. And then she explains all the times why it's his fault. It's his fault. He's like, fine, I'm going to leave. And she's like, what? You're not going to fight for me. And this is like how this is how the whole like Trump side of TikTok thinks all women are is like they're going to like hurt you and then blame you for it and then walk away. And honestly, he should. She is not a good person. She treated him like shit. She threw their marriage away. And I guess the moral of the story is he still loves her and he should go back to her. And they're even now because he fucked other girls when she broke up with him. Like this is, it's insane. And so then we have Emma Stone, who it's revealed is his daughter. It goes, it's deeper than that. I want to stick on Steve Carell and Julianne more for a minute. Let's stick on that. It's not just literally what he's wearing. There's something inside of him that's died. And that goes deeper than just his red pill. Partner new. Oh, my God. Uh, he's uh, lost the spark. It goes, it goes, yeah, he's lost the spark, man. This is deeper than right. buying somebody a new pair of slacks. So she deserves to be cheated on is what you're saying. He doesn't deserve to be cheated on, but she made a mistake. And the attitude toward that in this movie, look, this is not a pro-cheating stance. It's an anti woman shaming stance this movie is really fucking hard on julianne Moore. people basically don't stop calling her a bitch for the rest of the movie for this one thing that she did that seems to be tied to a long time of cal not being himself not putting any work into himself or putting work into the relationship so we're told kind of conflicting things about that because you do mention that uh, the babysitter says, you know, he's such a great dad. He's the only dad that the kids want to stay up for. But 
that she's only getting like a partial view of him. And also, it's not that girls have crushes on him. It's that this one 17-year-old babysitter has a crush on him, an adult man, which means there's something else going on with her. Like, that is a whole separate thing. Yeah, that's her problem, not his. <laughs> I mean... It is weird. No, but, I, is, <laughs> but you're also dismissing her whole thing. Like, she is... You're like, she's she's perfect. She has... A la- she has like not open communicated i mean all of this every single thing in this is communication like she could have had a talk with him about any of this it doesn't seem like she's done that at all it comes out of left field for him and so what she does instead of having a conversation she fucks another guy which by the way emma stone her daughter doesn't want to have a conversation with a guy so she fucks somebody else like that's like like mother like daughter it's crazy that seems nuts right I'm sorry not everybody's perfect in a movie <laughs> we have flawed characters they don't do everything right it makes sense that the mother's tendencies would be passed down to emma stone uh nana it does her make name sense in that. that makes um, a ton of sense it makes a lot of sense and it's like it's real like yeah she's not a flawless person she sucks everybody sucks i think what we've determined is this this is like a beautiful pixar take on red pilling in a way like it's kind of like an adorable red pill movie <laughs> like it's it's a nice red pill movie and those are hard to make it, it's it all the more impressive that this man made a red pill movie and it's and it's kind of fun do you think anybody was like while they were making this movie like oh this is this is fucked up cuz looking back it's like no so many of these scenes yeah the fact that she that the babysitter hands him hands Robbie a photo of herself when she is 17 like nobody involved in the production is like hey we're playing like you know real optimistic hipster mid 2010s music over a scene where someone's handing someone child pornography like nobody's like, yeah, this is a little bit fucked up. To be fair, that I think this time. was all cool then. It was all cool then. Yeah, I love everything it was, in this was acceptable then. It was twelve years ago. We're making progress now. It, it it was a little messy. Yeah, I don't think they'd make it again now. And that's what's beautiful is children can pass CP to each other, <laughs> and nobody can bat an eye. Oh Jesus Christ! It was a simpler time. I will say, was anyone r- rooting for Marissa Tomei? Because the second they met, I was like, I hope he ends up with Marissa Tomei. And then instead, they're like, oh, no, he didn't call her and she's upset about it. <laughs> and it's like, oh, what a crazy bitch. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's a weird situation. Like, that, there's probably a different way we would do this. You wouldn't make that the choice in uh, 2023. It's it's very weird. Uh Terrible, terrible. And I think the women are treated like women. objects in this, which is interesting. Dude, the uh, Marisa Tomei yeah. thing that I think is interesting, the character trait, I think it's amazing that we see that she is so enamored with his brutal honesty when they first meet, which is, again, dicey. Like, when I watched it for the first time, I was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. And now watching it again, it's like, she ignores a really shitty monologue like a, like an airhead and latches on to one compliment about her, which does not. It wasn't even up. given to her. It, yeah, <laughs> she point. plays she plays the it dumbest airplanes. woman on earth in this movie. <laughs> She's just the dumbest person on the planet. It's crazy. Um, and then like yeah. they, if we just if we cut past that, if we do this movie the honor of cutting past that scene, and we go straight to the scene where they're hooking up, and if we take that on its face as like this is a person who has been with so many guys who have lied to her that she's finally found this guy who's being brutally honest. And this is the most attractive thing that she's ever seen. That's kind of a fun character angle to play with. And it also gives a lot more gasp when they meet again later and he is trying to cover his tracks and he's lying in front of her. Just how much fuel that would add to her fire. That's really cool. It's just unfortunate that the first scene with her is that big of a train wreck. It's crazy he doesn't call her. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Not- she's she's super hot. They have great chemistry. Uh, why would you not call? Like, even if it's like casual, like you didn't reach out to her at all. What are you nuts? I don't know. It's, I think I I think they try to make her seem that. a little bit crazy so he doesn't call her back. Yeah, it doesn't work because no. if they were aiming for that, they missed. Because I'm right there with Tim. I'm like, he should have called. 
yeah, he's not going to call Marissa Tomei back. Like, what? Yeah. The like, what are we talking about? Can we can we talk about this cast though a little bit? Because they are it. very good. Steve Carell is very funny in this movie. Amazing. Ryan Gosling, very funny in this movie. We'll get to mm-hmm. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Emma Stone doesn't get to do a whole lot, but when she does, yeah. it's pretty good. Come on, that uh, that scene in the apartment in the rain, iconic. Come on, dude. That's a good scene. That's a good scene. Okay, you'd we'll want to be picked new, up by uh, Ryan. We'll get into our new category, Hot Goss, where we talk about uh, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling is a bad actor, and <sighs> there's just no if around it. Emma Stone is a great actor. She's great. And for mm-hmm. moments, I thought they had chemistry. And I was like, whoa, is something happening here? And it's she's doing the heavy lifting in this. You know, she she is really making the chemistry work, and she's pulling it off. And she's making this somewhat convincing. My favorite scene with Ryan Gosling is when him and Steve Carell are at the bar. I even forget the bit. I think I wrote it down somewhere where he's like doing weird voices oh, at he's the bar during sex. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. And he's like, what is this? Yeah. The, what a, the Don and he's Rickles like thing goofing off. And again, it's the I just don't think he looks comfortable ever. And that was one of the few scenes in this where he looked like he was like Ryan Gosling as a person was having a good time doing this scene. And then the rest of the time, he's like, he's pretending to be like this cool guy, you know, and like do the lift and stuff. And he's just, he's just, he's not a good actor. He's an okay actor maybe, but he's not, he's not a good actor. I don't know. You don't buy him as that guy. You think he's trying to be a cool guy and not selling it at all. That is deranged. (laughs) I think what he's you, pretending. What are you looking for in a cool guy? I mean, he's be, he's being an actor. He just <laughs> he actor. doesn't look comfortable. <laughs> Steve Carell is a million times better than him. There, Wait, it's like I, night I, and day. Steve Carell I, says something, and I'm like, oh, he just he just said a thing. It's like organic. It feels right. Ryan Gosling repeats lines from a script and looks kind of like stiff. I just always think Ryan Gosling looks uncomfortable, except for the music scene in Barbie. When he's singing in Barbie, he looks very relaxed and in his element and to and then doing the goofy voices like there's moments when he seems kind of comfy. There's moments with Emma Stone where he seems like Ryan Gosling is kind of having a good time. But I think there's like a weird pressure on him. And it seems like he has to carry the weight of being this cool guy. Like it feels it feels like it's heavy on him as a human being like, to have to deal with we, this. We get into that when he's like, when he and Emma Stone are talking in bed and he's talking about like his addiction to like the home shopping network and all the stuff he buys. He's very vulnerable in that moment and very embarrassed. And I really buy that. And I think you make a character, a character so stiff and cool So when that moment does come where he opens up to somebody, it feels like something and it matters. And there's contrast there. Like he's supposed to be kind of stiff stiff and have these rules. And then we get to see that breakdown. And you even said, you just said you like some of those moments with Emma Stone. I think it's all designed that way because he's not the lead in this movie. He is this kind of like magic figure that kind of just shows up and teaches Steve Carell something and then disappears, but then kind of gets his own story and we see him become a totally different guy. Imagine the pressure that would be on your shoulders to be that level of cool guy in real life all the time. I was having a conversation with my Dungeons and Dragons group recently, and we were talking about how nobody ever bothers to play a character with super high intelligence, like a high elf, very sophisticated high intelligence stat character because maintaining that and not fucking up or flubbing a word or saying something stupid would be so hard because you know that all your friends are around you like jackals just waiting for the first opening to take you down imagine looking like ryan gosling having the pressure of being cool like ryan gosling knowing that if you slipped up and said like neato one time you're cooked you're done you're over you use the wrong slang term you mean I thought you I thought he was a theater geek like I thought that's what you guys were selling me on that he's like a musical guy that he's like kind of a dork and like pretending to be this cool guy like I just don't think he's actually this guy the scenes where he's like has chemistry are the scenes where he's like not even talking in and like they're playing with like the little kid like her her sister or whatever and it's like him and Emma Stone they're goofing off as soon as he starts talking it like feels 
I just don't. I don't know. I do want to see La La Land. I think that's my last shot. Maybe we'll do Lethal Weapon 4 and La La Land and just like wrap this whole thing up because I don't. I just <laughs> there's nothing here for me. There's nothing good about this. Uh, it's fine. It's he's fine. He's just very fine. And. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yes. I did think about the like role of him as a pickup artist. And it seemed like this movie came out like when that was a thing. Like you remember like mystery and the game and like master pickup artist and they're teaching you all these things. And Ryan's felt a little bit more, uh, a little more predatory with like the, I've been looking at you for like all night and he just walked in, you know, there's just something extra sleazy about it, which I kind of enjoy, but from an acting standpoint, it's like, I don't know. I feel like Hitch did this better. Am I crazy? Hitch came out like yeah, yeah, years crazy, earlier. Tim, you think it? You think that's out of your fucking you don't think mind. you think yeah. Will, Will Smith isn't as char- isn't as charming as Ryan Gosling? Is that what you're saying? I think Will. I, if we're talking about believability here. Will Smith's character in that movie is a cartoon character. He's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> 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 oh my god the uh, Ryan Gosling's finale, not a cartoon character Lethal Weapon 4, La La Land, and Hitch uh, <laughs> well, let's do it I'll make you guys watch Hitch should we do some I've beefs and Hitch? because I've yeah. got and some I just want to say ones. before because I know I just kind of shit on Will Smith and I just want to say he has never done a single thing ever that I didn't really love not a mm-hmm. single thing inside of acting or out I've loved right. every single thing he's done Even hitting uh, Chris Rock. I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> Let's do a beef and thief. I have a beef that I want to do with Ryan Gosling, right? <laughs> Gosling, <laughs> fucking shit. No, but this is about the story. This is about the story. Ryan Gosling's character became this like womanizer, this like cool guy, because his dad was too soft, and he was always talking about what a soft guy his dad is what a nice guy his dad is. Then his dad dies. And and something in that experience made him go the exact opposite way from his dad. Like, I can't be a nice guy. Nice guys die. <laughs> I, I need to go straight and narrow. So like, what happened to his dad? Was his dad like, did his dad die like holding the door open for somebody? Or did he, what was he like doing too much charity work and passed out from exhaustion? Like, what was the, what was the nice thing that killed his dad and sent him down this path? His dad took his blazer off to lay it down over a puddle for a woman to step on. (laughs) And he caught pneumonia and never recovered. It was a long illness and eventually took him out. (laughs) The the Harrison syndrome or whatever. Who's that president that died from pneumonia? I don't know. Whatever. William Henry Moving Harrison. On. Yeah. Um, Green, what do you think? I I what do I think about not getting the story for why his dad died about being a nice guy? <laughs> do I you think there's a scenario? I, here's what I think. Here's what I think. I think it is truly a skill that only you have to take something so innocuous it's and not- make it this giant problem for you in a movie it's the motivation for his entire character i sit here stunned i sit here shocked (laughs) (laughs) this is his whole thing this is his but but the foundation of his character is that his dad did something so nice that he died and now he can't no no that is that, that is not what that's, they say. He doesn't what say my dad. It's and also he he what died. Else? It's not he was so he nice died. that he died. But something he just about happened that. to die. <laughs> this is this is like for you need to say that movie to dig up a detail that deep just to perpetuate this hatred of Ryan Gosling. When last week on this pod you referred to Gina Davis as what's her name. That's Your fair. selective attention is dedicated what has she done? to hating Ryan Gosling. <laughs> what has she done? Uh, the and... Olympics? Ever heard of them? Um, anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to tell you why that happened and why why it went Please. the way it did. He didn't die because he was a nice guy. That's I'm going to reject that instantly, but I will say how that does happen. Ryan Gosling was a child and he saw that his father was a nice guy and it 
didn't work out for him. And then his father died. And I think the adult Ryan Gosling now knows something about the world and wishes he could teach that to his dad. But he doesn't have his dad anymore. Who shows up? This other older man who reminds him of his dad. And that's why he bonds to him. And that's telling us that's why he's connected to this person. Ryan Gosling's like, don't take, don't, <laughs> don't open a door for a woman because you might hit your head on it and die. It's not what he's saying. It's... <laughs> We're just kind of learning why he took Steve Carell under his wing. Do you think? Yeah, I don't. We we we're just on different sides of this, but I think <laughs> he I is the fact that your dad died and he was nice enough of a justification to never let anybody in ever again. It's it. Okay. The way you said it sounded nice, but it watching it, I was like, I don't know if this is enough. But that's not the justification for not something? letting. That's the justification for not letting anybody in ever again. I would argue that he took more after his mom. He calls her like a cold, vain woman obsessed with things. Who does that sound like? It sounds like him. Like he was raised by his mom, who is this person. He didn't have that father figure, and he's he's got this kind of really fucked up view of what it is to be a man. And he doesn't really see that until he meets Emma Stone's character. I don't think we think he's a great guy in this movie. I think he is kind of a scumbag. And it's because he didn't, he was raised not by his father, but by this woman who he speaks of pretty lowly, who has all the same traits as him. Yeah. Which okay. honestly was surprising too, because the rest of this movie is so kind to women. <laughs> you convinced me. You convinced me. Uh, Does anybody else have a yeah, beef or a thief they want to get at? Oh, Yeah. Okay, let's let's think about this for a second. I got some notes here. Oh, I think it is wildly unacceptable for Steve Carell to go out in the middle of that graduation and make that about him. Insane. Yeah. It's insane behavior. It's crazy. There, there was if that was my kid's graduation, and this and somebody did that, I would go down and beat Steve Carell's ass again for a second time in that movie. It's like this isn't about you. You you're talking about your whole life right here. This, my kid's 13. You're running around with child porn. Your whole family's fucked. Get out of here. <laughs> but the women in the uh, in the audience love it. Oh, they couldn't get enough yeah. of it. Crazy. And dude. another beef. The, that scene. <laughs> Sorry. The kid is uh, I just want to tag on to the graduation. Robbie, our favorite character. When he starts to say something about I love you, even though you walked in on me. And it was the moment was she walked in on him. He was masturbating. But the way that he phrases it is even though you walked in on me when I was under the covers doing and then he gets cut off. And I've been thinking about it. I can't for the life of me <laughs> think of where he was going with the phrase doing like, does he have some kind of a weird slang term? <laughs> No, because that's lazy ass writing. That is somebody who's like, oh, he's going to get cut off. So I don't have to think about what the fucking end of the sentence says. Oh, that happens in so many movies. Again, just get every child out of this movie. They don't belong here. It's when they're in it, it's related to porn and them jerking off. Yeah. You know what? This movie is fucked. This movie is completely fucked, Tim. You want to be over. It's insane. Burn it down. Aside from Gosling, there's not much good about it. Uh, I did want to throw this out. Kevin Bacon doesn't seem like a bad guy. He's perfect no. casting. He seems like a good no, I thought he was great. Also, yeah. once you yeah, see and... Kevin Bacon, I'm like, oh, I get what she wants. <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. I, I get why she wanted. I, I get why this is happening. Uh, this makes sense. Yeah. I, I did want to take just one moment to speculate on what Ryan Gosling's life was going to be like after this movie. Because oh, I don't think they make it in any way. I think here's what happens. I think they're together and it's good. And the one thing he's good at is picking up women. He has no job. He's unemployable. He probably didn't go to college. And she's clearly about to be a very successful lawyer who's gotten offers at these big places. So she's going to start going to work during the day and he will be left with nothing. His thing is sleeping in till three and then going to the bar. He has no skills whatsoever and then they're going to start having to go to galas and parties together and she's going to be the center of attention and they'll say what do you do and he'll say nothing and he'll start to resent that for a while <laughs> and he won't know like what to do with himself and then he'll be like well i could just go out to the bar maybe i'll just flirt that'll be okay 
just to like feel like myself again, feel like I have something. It's the only thing I'm good at. And then it will go too far and the cycle will repeat. And his life will be very lonely and miserable. And then she'll marry Kevin Bacon eventually. Oh, God. That felt personal. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 Any no, lawyers uh, my... dragging you to Gallows Green? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say when someone asks, what do you do? Uh, you know what? If I had drawn that parallel myself, I would have never said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it, I, well, unless he becomes Hitch. I was like, he needs a daytime thing. He can help, you know, men pick up women and be like, look, yeah. I'm in love now. You know, this these skills helped me get this woman. Yeah, he could just dress men at the Century City Mall. He oh, could just he could. Like, take them on. He'll be a stylist, I guess. That's his skill. Is fund. he can put Steve Carell in a fucking quarter zip, <laughs> the worst piece of clothing on the planet. Uh, Matt frustrated the hell out of me. His first makeover, his first big one, we put him in a goddamn quarter zip. Something that should have never been invented. Dude, Breen, you got to remember, this is what, 2011? The quarter zip was cutting edge technology. Dude. Prior to about 2010, that zipper had to go all the way down or not at all. We didn't have the technology <laughs> to stop the zipper halfway. Mm -mm. <laughs> it was an all or nothing thing with the zipper. It was, it was a quarter or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think those are my last thoughts. <laughs> I think uh, I think you're right on him repeating these patterns of behavior because I caught a piece of something that felt like maybe it was left over from another idea of where the script could go. Where when he is talking to Cal and talking about how he's really, truly in love with Hannah. He's like, I don't know what to do because I can't stop this. And he kind of gestures out to the bar. And it's like, oh, shit. Is he still going to this bar? Like, has he been out here doing this still? Yeah, I don't remember that that line, but that's not good. No, yeah. I don't think that's good in the long term. Rewatch the movie again, download it again on iTunes, but just know that pretty much from this point forward, if you watch this movie, you are on a government watch list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like really regret so. i regret coming in so hot and support and just getting that just getting swatted down because this is just an andrew tate fantasy <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, is this is today. this is a tateism for sure uh with an I incredible to... cast <laughs> <laughs> there are good jokes in this though and i did laugh a couple times i think the hardest i laughed was when that dude comes up to Steve Carell in the bar, orders a Chardonnay, and then downs it. <laughs> like, just chugs a Chardonnay like he's working up the courage to tell Steve something. Incredible character choice. Incredible character choice. And the cancer divorce scene is great. That's awesome. That could go in any divorce rom com when he goes into the office and oh in the office the boss yeah thinks he has cancer because he was crying in the bathroom and it's like no i'm just getting divorced and they're like oh thank god thank god we I, all thought it was cancer I, <laughs> I loved that i did love that i thought they went too far when he walked out and everybody clapped yeah. for him <laughs> and stood up like he just broke a huge story <laughs> it's very funny though it doesn't make any sense but it's funny it's a oh, great it's rare funny. appearance from uh, Bulldog Briscoe from Frasier. Uh, <laughs> oh, it is Bulldog, is isn't it? Oh, yeah. He's got a few more years on him. But he's still got that Bulldog spirit. I think my favorite joke in this movie is when Cal comes over to talk to Jacob for the first time. And Jacob is calling him out for complaining about David Lindhagen to the entire bar. And he's like, yeah, your wife slept with David Lindhagen. You know how I know that? And Cal says, like, under his breath, mm -hmm. like, did you sleep with your wife, too? It's a great joke. <laughs> yeah. Great oh, joke. it's so good. And that, yeah, it goes because you've been talking about it nonstop for two days. It's so good. That's a great joke. It's really good. expertly by Ryan Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few things he does expertly. Uh, what about um, Breen? Thank you so much for stopping by. We're going to do another one right after. <laughs> <laughs> what about thank and brief for going, stopping by? We're going, we're going uh, right into Lethal <laughs> Weapon 3. I can't wait to do it. We're going to talk about it. Also, check out Breen's uh, podcast, Everything But Net. 
Uh, great title, great name, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Breen. Thanks so much for having me, guys. I can't <laughs> wait to be to see you in a couple minutes. Oh, man. Hey, right back at you, pal. We will be back here next week with the thrilling conclusion to this year's Gazoff uh, with Lethal Weapon 3. Till then, thank you for listening. Stay nerdy, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> you got to sing song with Preen. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> it's over. It. <laughs>